Hello, everybody, and a really, really warm welcome to our Connected Women launch event for our Mobile Gender Gap Report 2021. My name is Dominica Lindsay, and I'm Senior Director on the Connected Women team here at GSMA, and I'll be your host for today. And we're so delighted to see so many of you joining us today from so many places around the world. And I imagine that, like me, many of you are dialing in from your homes today as we still find ourselves in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic. Many of us have realized over the past year just how important connectivity is. We've been able to go online to find out about the latest coronavirus news. We've been able to stay in touch with our friends and family and continue our daily lives and our work when we can. But so many people around the world, and particularly women, still do not have access to a mobile phone or mobile internet. And this is what we're going to be talking about today, the mobile gender gap. We're gonna be talking about how big it is, why does it exist, and what can we do to address it? Many of you might know that the, the reach of mobile technology today around the world is actually quite incredible. 83% of women in low and middle income countries now own a mobile phone, and 58% now use mobile internet. And in fact, the majority of men, and especially women in these countries who access the internet, only do so via a mobile phone. And being connected in this way is really, really crucial for these women, especially during the pandemic. For many women, their phone has become their doctor, a teacher for their children, a way for them to stay in touch with their loved ones during lockdowns, and a way to continue their farming activities and their micro businesses. To give you an example of how mobile is impacting women's lives, I wanted to kick off today by sharing with you a video. This video is about a lady in Kenya called Alessandra. And Alessandra runs a bicycle shop and she used her mobile phone to tell us this story about how mobile technology has been impacting her and her life during the pandemic. I'm Alexandra Wanjiru Mugo from Kirugaya town. I sell bicycle spare parts, some hardware. This is my own business. Actually, my hobby of riding the bicycles made me connected to the internet using the Google app and it helped me identify some of the different types of bicycles that are there challenged me to get some of them. COVID-19, which has been a great challenge to us because many of us were not able to open their shops. But as for us, we had the old stock, which mostly we sell online. We normally post them on Facebook. That is where we get uh, customers' feedbacks, uh, we communicate with our customers. We make an order and we do delivery. We also have a WhatsApp group whereby we also connect to the, our retailers and they give us their feedbacks. As for the payments, they have been good because we've been using uh, mobile transactions, mostly m -Pesa, which is an awesome way of transacting. I think Alessandra's video is really, really heartwarming and it really shows us how mobile technology can really support women's lives, especially in today's world. But as many of us know, sadly, there are millions of women around the world who do not have access to a mobile phone and mobile services like Alessandra does, and they're really missing out. And our Connected Women team work tirelessly on this issue and we're hugely grateful for the support of the UK FCDO and CEDA without whom our mobile gender gap report today would not have been possible. And this issue is also very important for our partners. And we're very privileged that later today, we'll be hearing from some of them about what they're doing to address this issue. There's one partner who couldn't make it in person today, but wanted to show her support for this important cause. So I'm delighted to share with you a quote from Her Royal Highness Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, who's a leading global voice on financial inclusion and the UN Secretary General's Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development. 
As you can see, she highlights the importance of connectivity for women's economic empowerment. And towards the end there, you might be able to see that she urges stakeholders to take note of the findings from our report and scale up their efforts to close the mobile gender gap. We have a really exciting lineup of speakers for you today. First, I'm delighted to introduce you to my colleague, Isabel Carboni, who is Insights Director at the GSMA and lead author of this year's Mobile Gender Gap Report. She'll be taking us through the findings today, and it was only released a few hours ago, so hot off the press. And while we go through it and also through the rest of today, please do feel free to ask your questions in the chat and comments box, and our team will endeavour to answer them. Over to you, Isabel. Hi, I'm Isabel Carboni, and I'll be sharing with you the key findings from our 2021 Mobile Gender Gap Report. The Mobile Gender Gap Report series is an annual report that we've been publishing for the last four years, enabling us to comment on trends in the gender gap across low and middle income countries. The findings in this report were drawn from the GSMA Consumer Survey, supplemented by other third party data and qualitative research that we conducted in India and Kenya, highlighting the impact of COVID-19 on mobile use by women. Despite the pandemic, we were able to complete the nationally representative survey in person in eight lower middle income countries to gather critical data on the mobile gender gap and allow us to get an early indication of the potential impact of the pandemic on women's access to and use of mobile. In this presentation, I'll be sharing with you some of these key findings. One question that was top of mind for us this year was how the onset of the pandemic had influenced the mobile gender gap. 2020 was an unprecedented year and the disproportionate negative impact of the pandemic on women has been well documented. For example, on their increased workloads and their loss of income opportunities. The good news is that so far at least, the pandemic does not seem to have had significant impact on the gender gap in mobile ownership, which has remained relatively unchanged, nor the gender gap in mobile internet use, which has seen positive change this year, driven mostly by South Asia. COVID-19 has highlighted just how important connectivity is for sharing information about the pandemic, maintaining relationships with friends and family, supporting livelihoods and enabling remote access to services such as healthcare and education throughout the lockdowns. Yet there are two sides to this COVID story and we don't yet know what the long-term impact will be. On the one hand, the pandemic restrictions are driving greater need for connectivity as life has moved increasingly online. From our qualitative research, we found that in India, the lockdowns and COVID restrictions provided additionally socially acceptable justifications for some women to go online, for example, for children's education. But on the other hand, there are early signs that in some countries, the pandemic may be negatively impacting women's handset ownership more than men's. For example, our qualitative research in Kenya revealed that the economic impact of COVID-19 has been severe, affecting the affordability of mobile and lowering the justification for some women to use the internet. It's crucial that we continue to monitor the impact of, as the pandemic evolves across the world. So where are we today? Across low and middle income countries, 58% of women are now using the mobile internet. But how does women's increased use compare to men? Last year, we reported that in low and middle income countries, women were 20% less likely to use the mobile internet than men. This year, the mobile gender gap has improved. It's reduced to 15%. South Asia in particular has seen significant improvement with women continuing to use the mobile internet at a faster rate than men due to changing market dynamics and price reduction, resulting in a regional gender gap that's reduced from 50% last year to 36% this year. South Asia has previously had the widest gender gaps, but it is now on a par with Sub-Saharan Africa for the first time. But overall, the mobile internet gender gap remains high, with significant gaps in regional and national levels. And while we've seen reductions in South Asia, the mobile internet gender gap remains largely unchanged in the other regions 
highlighting that there's still important work to be done. As I mentioned earlier, it remains to be seen what the long-term impact of the pandemic will be. If we want to close the gender gap, we need to understand what is preventing women from owning a mobile phone all the way through to using the mobile internet regularly and accessing its full potential. We use a simple framework to understand this mobile internet user journey. The gender gap tends to widen at each stage in this journey. So although the gender gap for mobile ownership is 7%, it's more than double that at 15% for mobile internet use. Starting with mobile ownership, handset affordability is a key barrier. But it's also important to look at what type of handset people own. Smartphones are a driver of greater mobile internet use. And when, a women, when women own smartphones, they are almost as likely as men to use the mobile internet and use a similar range of services. For the first time since 2017, the gender gap in smartphone ownership has reduced, driven by South Asia. Yet women still typically own more basic handsets than men and are still 15% less likely than men to own a smartphone, which mirrors the gender gap in mobile internet usage. Moving on to awareness of mobile internet, we see that the gender gap continues to reduce, and there's been significant progress since 2017, particularly in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Nigeria. Despite this rising awareness amongst women, the mobile internet gap is still high, suggesting that there's other key barriers stopping women from using it. Our researchers found that once women are using a mobile phone and they're aware of the internet, the top barriers that prevent them from accessing the mobile internet are a lack of literacy and skills and affordability, primarily as internet-enabled handsets. These are the same barriers for men. But we also see that these barriers disproportionately impact women. Women tend to belong to the groups that are most likely to be unconnected, such as those who are unemployed or have low literacy levels, and are also often affected by social norms that make mobile ownership and use more difficult. On mobile internet use, we see that even when women do use the mobile internet, they tend to use a narrower range of services than men. Despite this, there have been some positive changes in women's use cases this year. Mobile owners are now using their phones in a wider variety of ways than they were in 2019. Across lower middle income countries, we saw particular growth in the weekly reported use of mobile internet for listening to music online, watching free videos, and video calling. For example, in Kenya, the proportion of women reporting listening to free music online grew from 6% to 16%. In Bangladesh, women reporting watching free videos online almost doubled from 11 to 20%. And women's weekly use of video calling in India more than doubled from 16 to 34%. In our qualitative research in India, we saw that women's uptake of smartphones and the mobile internet were influenced by the additional justifications that COVID-19 restrictions provided. These included the need to connect with family and friends via video calls, access their children's education online, and find new income generating opportunities, as well as the increased pressure on devices in the home, especially during those lockdown periods. It remains to be seen if these behavior changes will stick post-COVID. Now, the mobile gender gap is driven by a complex set of social, economic, and cultural factors, which result in women experiencing barriers to mobile ownership and use more acutely than men. It's crucial that we address these issues. Closing the mobile gender gap presents social, commercial, and economic opportunities that will ensure that women are not further excluded from an increasingly digital society. If the mobile industry in low and middle income countries could close the gender gap in mobile ownership and use, this would represent a $140 billion commercial opportunity over a five year period. Over the same period, if we could close the gender gap in mobile internet, this would drive an additional 
$700 billion in GDP growth. Including women digitally will bring benefits to society at large, and it's critical to delivering on the Sustainable Development Goals. It's not just SDG 5 that relates to gender equality, but also goals on alleviating poverty, providing educational opportunity, and driving economic growth. So here's five points that we'd like to leave with you today. Mobiles are a critical tool for women, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has not negatively impacted the mobile gender gap overall, at least for now, but we need to keep tracking this data to ensure women's digital inclusion. The mobile internet gender gap has reduced, but primarily driven by South Asia, and it remains substantial with little improvement in the other regions. Owning an internet enabled handset helps women to access the full benefits of mobile connectivity. Improving affordability, particularly handset affordability, and literacy and skills are critical to closing the mobile gender gap. So, what can stakeholders do to address the mobile gender gap? Our full report provides more specific recommendations for different stakeholders, but here are four high-level actions to consider. Ensure that there's a focus on gender equality and reaching women at an organizational and policy level through senior leaders championing the issue and setting specific gender equity targets. We believe it's crucial for stakeholders to understand the mobile gender gap. This can be done by improving the quality and availability of gender disaggregated data and by understanding women's needs and the barriers that prevent them from owning and using mobile technology. Unfortunately, this data is currently lacking Gender disaggregated data is crucial for measuring the gender gap and is critical for setting targets, developing strategies, policies, and the commercial approaches to address the mobile gender gap and to keep tracking our progress. When it comes to the designing and implementing mobile related products, services, and policies, stakeholders should ensure that ensuring women's needs, circumstances, and challenges are explicitly addressed. This includes addressing the key barriers faced by women, as well as a consideration of the social norms that can contribute to women experiencing those barriers more acutely than men. For example, when it comes to the top two barriers I mentioned earlier, affordability can be improved by supporting industry to lower the upfront cost of mobile handsets, particularly internet enabled handsets, which would disproportionately benefit women. And on literacy and skills, invest in education and mobile skills training specifically for women and girls that increases their digital literacy and their confidence levels. If stakeholders don't proactively take women's needs and the barriers they face into consideration, they may inadvertently reinforce the mobile gender gap. Finally, collaborate and partner with different stakeholders to address the mobile gender gap. Targeted intervention is needed from industry, policymakers, the development community, and other stakeholders to ensure that women are no longer left behind. COVID-19 has shown us the importance of tracking digital inclusion. Now, more than ever, it is critical that we continue to monitor the impact of the pandemic on the gender gap and to use this data to ensure the digital inclusion of women for a better future. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel, for taking us through the findings from our report. And a really, really big congratulations to all the team at GSMA and our research partners on the ground for pulling off this report in what has been a really challenging year. And I also want to thank all the experts who kindly shared their perspectives for this report. And please do include any questions you have for us in the chat. So next up, I'm delighted to welcome our next speaker, who is a long-term champion of women's equality from Zele Mlambo Guka, Executive Director of UN Women. And Matt Granrid, Director General of the GSMA, will be asking from Zele about her reaction to the findings of the report. So, uh, hello everyone. We have just heard from <clears throat> this previous speaker on the hugely important role that mobile has played during the pandemic. Yeah, but we also understand that the 
gender gap persists. Now, addressing the mobile gender gap is now more crucial than ever. And I am delighted that we have been able to launch the mobile gender gap report today and share the latest data and insights. Without understanding the issue and the opportunity, it is just not possible to address it and, and correct it. And I am thrilled and excited and honored to be joined today by one of my personal favorites and an, an, uh, and an authority on uh, the gender gap and how to handle it by UN uh, director, executive director of the UN Women uh, Group, uh, uh, Mrs. Pumsile Blambo Nguko. So hi, Pumsile, how are you doing today? I'm very fine, eh, Matt. It's wonderful to see you. Yeah, same, same, to, same uh, for me. It is really, really good to see you. So, Pumsil, if I can dive right into the questions. <clears throat> you wrote uh, an article uh, last year on uh, at the outbreak of the pandemic, arguing that we cannot allow COVID-19 to reinforce the gender digital divide. As in all crises, it has sort of the ability to polarize activities and highlighting the importance of how, how and what the mobile phones and internet access means for women. Can you tell us a little bit more why this is so important, especially in the context of the current global crisis? Uh, thank you, thank, thank, thank you, Matt. Uh, well, indeed, uh, uh, not to have a phone during the pandemic was almost double the punishment that you are getting from the pandemic. Many of us who were lucky to be connected, were able to work, were able to communicate and to check how other people were, were doing, were able to receive information in, uh, in, in, uh, in our phones. And that made a lot of difference because of the fear that this pandemic has. And because it was a health pandemic, we also got information that was important for our health. It therefore also helped us to uh, uh, take care of ourselves, not just for the pandemic, but for other things that you did not need to go to the doctor to. So we were able to consult with, with doctors, nurses through, through the phone. So I can just imagine how difficult it, it, it must have been for people who were not connected with, uh, with, with anybody. Uh, I mean, in the last 15 months, I've therefore become even more tech savvy because I have had to learn to use every little bit of my phone and the services and discover many more services, services that I don't normally use in the phone uh, in, in normal times. Uh, but because of the situation, I was able to, to, to use these phones. Phones are critical for families. Uh, uh, many women with children everywhere uh, need this to monitor, to know where their children are and to be of support to them in case support uh, is, is, is needed. We knew from the Ebola crisis how girls were assisted by by phones and we were able in 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 UN women to relay that information to as many people as possible and give them examples of the things they can do for for for, for their phones so online commerce as a result grew during the pandemic because the phone was being used also for trading online shopping uh, was also something that we did a, 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 a lot of. So, you know, who would have known that uh, the phone can do so much uh, for us? Well, we know now and we need to promote this. Yeah, I, I think that uh, you're, you're so right to say that it's uh, more hit to women than only one uh, with healthcare and, and also the pandemic. And I would uh, think as well that education might be impaired as well, where you are dependent on, on yes. a mobile device. You're absolutely right. Yes. And I have read the yeah. analysis Thanks. saying that we have taken leaps forward uh, corresponding to three to four years 
in our digital skills level because of this pandemic. So uh, it, it yeah. has, certainly has the ability to split people. Uh, you're absolutely yeah. right. Now, can I ask you, from I mean, we just heard about the latest data from the Mobile Gender Gap Report. What is your reaction to these findings? What, what do you think is the most interesting uh, or important finding uh, in the report, and maybe why? Uh, well, firstly, congratulations for the reports. Another groundbreaking work, which we always look uh, uh, forward to. Uh, such data is important for us to gauge ourselves and see if we're moving backwards uh, or, or, or forwards. It's very good to know from the reports that uh, women's access to mobile internet continues to increase uh, across low middle and uh, middle and uh, low income countries. And also that women are more likely than men to access internet exclusively on the mobile handset. Uh, that means that uh, they are able to keep this, this, this information with them everywhere everywhere they go. Uh, I like the fact that the report highlights the importance of both increasing mobile access uh, to women, as well as reducing mobile gender gap, something that you and I uh, have been fighting to do all the time and must still continue to, 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 to do so. Uh, because this means that uh, we now are increasing and spreading the community uh, in the world, uh, we are making this global village to be a village for everybody in the true sense of, of, of the word. Uh, we do need to make sure that uh, uh, women can own uh, the devices uh, uh, themselves and make sure that uh, uh, women do not struggle to have access uh, to, to, to the devices because clearly uh, this uh, helped very, very much. Uh, also, access to mobile phone is a way to drive equality uh, uh, by allowing women and girls to access knowledge and health and financial services. I like the fact that you highlighted how much this has done for education. I have seen it myself because I participate in a program that trains teachers to be digital uh, literate. Few years ago, I had to beg teachers to come to class for this. I did not have to beg them in 2020. Right. The teachers were knocking at our door, really? wanting to be trained. So this is something that has been very great. And of course, another finding that I'd like to highlight uh, is that the overall gap in mobile ownership remains largely uh, unchanged uh, since 27. So something that we, we must uh, be concerned about that the gender gap in smartphone ownership that is, and has reduced for the first time since uh, it was driven in South uh, Asia. So it's, it's, it's a little uh, increasing, and, but this is something that uh, we can we can push so that it can move uh, uh, very fast. Before smartphones are uh, uh, important because we do want women to be in the gig economy and to use the phones to earn money and uh, to use also the the, the phones uh, to advertise their products and 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 and, and so on. So the, in the report, it indicates uh, positive aspects of this kind of growth in that such financial independence uh, and, and, and this a new found liberation women uh, is enhancing them, their sense of identity, the sense of who they are. And it helps women who are living in difficult situations to have more choices to get themselves away from harm's way. So that is something that uh, we, we appreciate uh, uh, very much. So we, we are truly encouraged uh, by what is, is in the report. This is a report that uh, many people should, should read 
and see some of the things that they themselves can share with those they, uh, who need. It, it provides opportunities for employment as well. People can see where uh, there are possibilities for them to apply for, 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 for employment. It also uh, provides information that is important for people to know about their rights, something that is very important. And women tend to want to know about that. And women in this time of a health crisis they use the phone a lot to look for health information, something that we also have to be careful for, make sure that the information is always correct, because, you know, health information has, that is not without victims. So this is something that people like you and me need to uh, remain alive to but uh, very well encouraged by the reports. Uh, that, that's, that's fantastic to hear from Sila. And I mean, <clears throat> from your last question, from your vantage point, I mean, we have been working together for, for quite a few years and, and uh, we will continue to work on this very important topic, but how, how and what, if you can give us advice, give me advice, what, what should we do as a community to accelerate the closure of this gap, because it's clearly not okay to have a bifurcation between usage of, of internet. Uh, because you, I mean, you just went through all the benefits of, of being online and, and being able to access information and healthcare and education, etc. So, what what should we do? Do you, do you have any any uh, any tips and, and hints what we should be focusing on going forward? Certainly to get more of us to be part of this journey. And one way of doing that is uh, being in generation equality. This offers a, a platform with uh, many uh, like-minded and wannabe participants uh, in, in this journey. In generation equality, we are trying to uh, uh, address the, the, the digital gap, is, and in particular, the digital gender gap, but we're concerned about the gap overall for, for boys and girls, men, men, men and women, but for, for this discussion in particular to reduce uh, the, 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 the gender gap. It's also important uh, that uh, we push for producing information uh, that responds to the specific needs of uh, women and that we pay attention to fake news. And uh, I think people should be encouraged and know that uh, it matters to refute this information. So when you see it, just don't let it go and, and feel, ah, you know, no one is going to listen to me. Uh, it's important to, 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 to refute back because you make the readers uh, think. In this action co coalition for uh, innovation and technology, we also are talking about increasing the number of girls that will go for STEM subjects. Just by using the phone is the first step uh, of uh, getting into 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 the, into this STEM field, and this will drive jobs and close the gap of men and women who, who are in technology. Um, I mean, in the US alone, uh, computer science research jobs are predicted to grow by 19% by 2025, yet women in this sector, uh, in just 18% of computer science bachelor's degrees. Now, we can uh, increase, uh, we can increase that, and of course, the Action Coalition uh, blueprint addresses some of these gaps. The goal is that of doubling women and girls working in technology and, 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 and innovation. And this is uh, aimed to reduce by half the gender digital gap. So this has to happen in our lifetime. Uh, in the next five years, uh, we should have reduced that and by 2030, Hopefully, we can reach a point of parity between men and women who are using these phones in a smart way. 
Yeah. That's perfect. So from in 2025 or 2026, when we will launch the gender gap report at that time, we, we can have another yeah. chat and see that we have actually managed yeah, to we, we'll it. be taking the last jump. <laughs> Well, uh, Pumsila, thank you very much. So it's uh, down to having more of uh, public-private partnerships, more people arguing what we are arguing, the importance of closing the gender gap, and of course, education and focusing on STEM and making sure that women and girls feel enthusiastic about joining uh, uh, the, the STEM and uh, uh, both STEM education and that type of work. So thank you very much. Now, if, if I may, <clears throat> so what we have learned today uh, there has been some progress, uh, but the mobile gender gap still remains substantial. And it uh, remains to see how COVID-19 pandemic will impact it into the future. Uh, so we all need to work together, that's for sure. And we, and we are going to ensure that women are not left behind. That, that's imperatively important. Now, I urge, we urge policymakers, the private sector and the international community to take note of these important findings and to work together to enable women and their families to reap the full benefits of connectivity. Let's remember that when women thrive, society, business, and, and economies thrive. So, Pumsila, thank you so much for joining uh, me and us today and uh, for this very important launch. Now, over to you, back to you, uh, Don. Thank you. Thank you so much from Zili and Mats. And I, I also hope that we'll be having a very different conversation about the mobile gender gap in 2025. Um, from Zili, it was great to hear your personal reflections on the report findings um, today and your point around um, gender data and the fact that gender data, including our annual report, is so important for us to know whether we're moving backwards or forwards. And our next speaker joins us from India which, as you heard from Isabel, is one place where we are certainly moving forwards on the mobile gender gap. And I have great pleasure in welcoming Vishaka Segal from Reliance Geo. Vishaka is Vice President and Head of Strategic Initiatives, Regulatory Policy and Research. And Geo is one of our operator commitment partners. They've made a formal commitment to increase the proportion of women in their mobile internet customer base by 2023. We're going to be asking Vishaka about what Geo has been doing to achieve this goal. I'm delighted to hand over to Claire Sivthorpe, head of our Connected Women programme, who will be speaking to Vishaka. It's a real pleasure and honour to have you here today. It's great to have you join, especially since uh, we've seen such great changes and positive changes in India. So thank you so much for giving your time and joining us at this launch. Um, I just wanted to, to kick off. So we just, we, uh, we just heard that the mobile gender gap in India is decreasing. Um, what, in your opinion, um, has contributed to this? And while it, it's surely a, a positive sign, findings suggest there's still a significant gender divide in um, access and use of the internet. So why, why is this an important issue for GEO? Uh, thank you, Claire, and congratulations to you and entire GSMA team on the launch of Mobile Gender Gap Report 2021. Uh, GEO has been a commitment partner and an ardent supporter of the Connected Women Initiative, which is why we always look forward to the findings of the Gender Gap Report. Uh, I honestly feel that the relevance and significance of this report uh, is even greater in the current times when connecting digitally has become the new normal for everyone. Uh, now, specifically to your point and reflecting on the findings of the report, uh, it is heartening to see that in India, we've made substantial progress in narrowing digital gender gap over the last few years both in terms of mobile ownership and internet usage. Uh, I would primarily attribute this to the 4G-led data revolution in the country. Uh, the widespread reach of 4G networks, low data tariffs, and affordable devices have translated into improved access of mobile internet for all segments, including women. Uh, Geo has been leading this digital transformation in India. In fact, uh, in India, the term geo effect is widely used to describe geo's impact in driving internet usage in the country. It's a matter of pride that today India, with its lowest per GB data rates in the world, has emerged as a global leader in mobile data consumption, leaving behind nations like USA and China. However, as pointed by uh, you, Claire, uh, we are aware that despite the headway in the last few years, 
women still have lesser access to internet and digital technologies uh, going by the findings of your report despite reduction there still exists a 15% gender gap in mobile ownership and that gap stands at 33% when we look at internet usage uh, at geo uh, we understand the widespread ramifications of this digital divide for women being digitally unconnected especially in times of the pandemic uh, not only deprives women from accessing life saving information related to covid management health protocols or vaccination availability but also prevents them for ha from harnessing the benefits of important digital services such as online education uh, remote payments uh, e-commerce and so on further increasing their prospects of exclusion and inequality Uh, also clear from an overall country perspective uh, we cannot achieve the desired economic growth if women are devoid of the benefits of the digital advancements that is taking place in the country bringing women in mainstream of economic life by empowering them with internet and digital technologies is absolutely vital to unlock the product uh, productivity and potential of our economy which is why Uh, geo stands firm in its commitment and resolve to advance digital gender equality providing inclusive and equitable access is a priority and we will continue to put in our best efforts to bring more and more women in the digital realm great uh, it's great to hear about your commitment and uh, and also the two sides of the story that it's a really positive reduction but there's still we still have a journey to go um so and we heard earlier that uh, um There's been a um, significant uh, reduction in the gender gap in mobile internet use and smartphone ownership in India, um, driven by a range of factors, including improved affordability of internet-enabled uh, handsets and phones. Um, now, Geo is an area that Geo has invested quite significantly in, um, for instance, with a Geo phone. So, I mean, it would be great to hear, you know, what have your main learnings been from these initiatives, and what uh, what other steps is Geo taking to kind of address the digital gender gap? Uh, absolutely, Claire. uh geo's contribution in democratizing internet and reducing the digital divide in the country has been enormous a simple and affordable da uh, tariff plans and compelling digital offerings have resonated with people across all segments making geo the digital backbone for more than 425 million indians in a very short span and in these last few years we first hand witnessed the transformative uh, power of broadband and how it has provided leapfrog opportunities for millions of people we truly want the benefits of this dig uh, digital advancement to permeate to all segments including women uh, in our endeavor to bring more women online we have been consciously working to address the barriers faced by women in accessing internet and have undertaken several initiatives in this regard Uh, as highlighted by you Claire one impactful initiative has been the geo phone uh, it has significantly contributed in bridging the affordability gap uh, that disproportionately affects women in fact uh, very early on in our journey we had recognized that in order to drive deeper proliferation of mobile internet apart from providing affordable connectivity we also need to create an ecosystem of affordable devices That is how we launched the Geo phone, which is our 4G enabled smart feature phone, priced as low as ten dollars. It has provided an affordable entry point for many first-time internet users users in the country, including a very large number of women. Uh, Geo phone supports as many as 24 Indian languages, and I'm happy to share that for more than 100 million Indians, Geo phone has been the gateway to internet and other digital services. uh in addition recognizing the prevailing gap in digital skills we have in recent times partnered with uh, partnered with many organizations and amplified our efforts towards digital literacy and awareness programs targeting women uh another very notable initiative uh, which i would like to talk about is our geo associate program uh that we had launched uh, sometime last year amidst the pandemic this has significantly contributed uh, in addressing the challenges in distribution and last mile limitations for women uh, and clear through this unique program essentially anyone can become a direct sales partner for geo and start providing 
recharge and activation services to others by simply using our GeoPOS Light application. So besides providing easier access, it has also created an avenue for income generation for millions of people, including women. Uh, and this P2P application has seen huge traction with around 1 million active associates on a monthly basis. And I'm delighted to share that some of the top performers for this program are actually women. Uh, furthermore, in our attempt uh, to empower women, we have recently launched the Her Circle digital platform, uh, which is a dynamic and comprehensive content, social networking, and goal fulfillment platform designed and tailored specifically to meet the needs of women. In fact, this has been conceptualized under the direct leadership and guidance of our foundation chairperson, Mrs. Neeta Ambani. Uh, we, we truly believe in, in this platform and we feel it can go in a long way uh, in advancing women's empowerment and also in promoting greater digital acceptance amongst women. Uh, additionally, a very recent association and partnership with USA to launch the WGDP Women Connect Challenge across India is yet another significant step in bridging the digital gender divide in India. Uh, through this initiative, we endeavor to identify and provide support to innovative digital solutions and offerings uh, and applications that are relevant for women and can bring a positive and meaningful impact in their lives. Uh, in conclusion, Claire, I would reiterate that the cause of digital gender equality has commitment and direction from the highest levels within GEO, and we will continue to explore innovative ways of promoting greater acceptance and adoption of internet-based services amongst women. Great, thanks. I mean, and those are amazing numbers you're sharing around the cost that you've managed to get phones down to, the reach you've had, and the fact that you've been able to launch all these new initiatives as well during COVID time is, is really impressive. Um, so I would like to, so I'm asking uh, you know, others this question as well, but you know, as we see that COVID-19 continues to take its toll in India, it's very sad to see to see the, the uh, recent outbreak. Um, it remains to see whether these um, promising gains in women's digital inclusion will be sustained. Um, so as a final reflection, based on your experience and, you know, where we've seen such a, a, such a significant reduction, what is the most impactful action that we can take? Uh, yes, Claire. Uh the COVID crisis has impacted us in ways like never before. And while it's accelerated the pace of digitalization, it has also exposed the deep-rooted gender gap in access to digital technologies. Uh, in fact, lack of digital access is already creating a gender skew in critical areas like COVID vaccination and education, with a large number of girls and women uh, being left behind. We need to demonstrate utmost, uh, utmost urgency in tackling the gender-based digital exclusion. Uh, and in my opinion, the digital divide is just not simply a question of access to digital technologies, but also uh, the knowledge and capacity to make meaningful use of that access. So if I have to prioritize one action, I would surely go with intensifying focus on literacy and digital skills. Uh, even as for the findings of your gender gap report, lack of knowledge and digital skills continues to be one of the top impediments for women in India. There is a huge proportion of women, especially uh, from rural and disadvantaged communities, who despite having access to broadband connectivity and a supportive handset, are barely using any internet-based services. Uh, their phone usage is, is merely limited to making basic voice calls. Even a simple uh, phone search and navigation seems like a very daunting task for them. So if we really want to harness the true potential of mobile internet, we must address these skill inadequacies. We need to accelerate our efforts towards creating and delivering customized yet adequately scaled digital training programs which can equip women and girls with the right skills to thrive in the digital era. And in order to maximize the impact and to create a greater pull for learning digital skills, it is imperative to raise awareness uh, and, and also create uh, that kind of pull between women. You, we have to uh, create awareness on how uh, these digital technologies can actually help in addressing women's priority needs, be it online education for their children, accessing healthcare services for families, financial inclusion, or 
learning vocational skills or any other women centric relevant service based on our own on ground experience in this domain we have realized that in a country which is as diverse as india uh, these capacity building programs and awareness programs can only be effective if the training toolkits and materials are adapted in vernacular language and capture the region specific nuances especially if we want to make the desired impact in the rural areas uh, finally claire uh, while of course the task of uh, driving proliferation of digital skills seems daunting due to the sheer enormity and the scale of our country i'm certain that with collective efforts and with the collective intent of all stakeholders be it government industry academia and social sector we will be able to address the digital literacy barrier for women and kick start their digital journey great thanks a lot thanks so much for highlighting that it's really also awesome. important to tackle not just one barrier but so many barriers and all the different layers of exclusion that women face it's not just about having a phone it's about being able to use it in a meaningful way um and uh, also giving us that hope that we can tackle this um thank you thank you really so much for your time it's been a real pleasure to have you here um and to hear from you especially with the, you know what's been going on in india and what we've seen in our research has uh, um in terms of uh, uh, the reduction of the gap and and what you've been doing so thank you really appreciate your time and uh, joining us for this event thank you so much vishaka thank thank you claire the pleasure was all mine thank you so much vishaka and claire and it's truly wonderful to hear about all the fantastic work that geo is doing in india to connect more women and i thought it was really interesting vishaka when you said that geo quickly realized it was not just about affordable data but also about affordable devices and that's certainly something that we've seen in our work and we do really believe that the affordability of internet enabled phones is a barrier that we all need to address if we're ever going to close the mobile gender gap and we turn now to another operator commitment partner who has also been taking action to improve handset affordability for women but in a very different context safari com in kenya i'm delighted to hand over to claire who will be speaking to peter degwa ceo of safari com hi peter thank you so much for joining us it's really exciting to have you here um safari com has been really leading the way and doing so much work in this space um as you just heard from the presentation of the findings the covid 19 pandemic appears to have be having a disproportionately disproportionate impact on women's mobile access in kenya this was wondering does this resonate with what you're seeing um and what's been the, you know and and what has been the focus of safari com on this particular topic yeah thank you claire uh, and and it's great to be involved uh, in this uh, uh as an organization as safari com uh our uh, purpose is to transform lives uh and uh, a big component of transforming lives is, is actually making sure that we have a business that is inclusive uh in particular really drive uh diversity so this is a a big part in terms of uh, the statistics that we have uh, in, in terms of our business we see uh that uh Uh, when you compare men and women in terms of access to, to connectivity uh we see a gap of between 8 and 13% depending on type of service uh, that we are providing uh if i give you uh, a couple uh, a couple of uh, uh so if you look at uh, uh if you look at uh, for example mobile data is 12% uh financial services is 13% uh, and uh Uh, and uh, in total you have you have about uh, 10% of the gsm side so we do see a gap between access from from uh, male and female the second aspect that we see a gap is in terms of spend we have a big financial services uh, business in terms of mobile money uh, and pesa uh, we see that a woman spends uh, 63 cents less on data this is on the connectivity side but also 37% less on voice uh, i should have said the actual the actual disparities on connectivity rather than on uh, on financial services so in total we see a us dollar one uh, one us dollar uh, difference between uh, spend uh, of male and female uh, being being higher than uh, than women uh, in terms of financial services we see actually uh, the opposite so women are saving more uh, so and and so we see a, a women deposit three and a half uh, dollars more per month uh, compared to men 
uh, and actually are paying more bills, uh, and 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 that is expected given women are, are in many in many cases caregivers. Uh, so about 3.9 uh, US dollar uh, in terms of uh, spe um, paying bills compared to, uh, to men. Uh, when we look at the uh, during COVID, we haven't seen any major change. Uh, so the, the differential is between 10 and 11. So it, there hasn't been a significant change uh, as a result of COVID. So hopefully that helps uh, to underscore the importance of really uh, kind of reducing the gender gap in terms of accessibility uh, for mobile financial services, but also connectivity. Great, thank you so much for also sharing that extra data points and insights. Really interesting and, and great to see that you're not seeing such an impact so far and, and uh, hopefully that will continue to be the case. Um, you mentioned um, about you know women spending less and things like that and we know that affordability obviously remains a key barrier to mobile internet, uh, particularly handset affordability. Um, which was ranked as a top barrier for both men and women in, in Kenya um, in our report. Uh, and Much Needed, Needed Digital is a, is a great initiative that tackles affordability, but also other challenges that Kenyan women um, face. Um, and it's a you know, great initiative by Safaricom. Um, I was just wondering why you took that sort of holistic approach uh, with that. Um, you know, why is it a holistic approach so important to you in terms of trying to tackle this issue? Yeah, Claire, before I talk about affordability, I just wanted to reinforce some of the uh, uh, work we have done during COVID to make sure that uh, uh, we don't see a, a bigger disparity, uh, both, in, both in total society, but also in the, in the gender disparity. Uh, so we rolled out a lot of services. So we gave free transactions below uh, $10, uh, which, uh, which so we gave 1.7 billion uh, transactions below uh, $10. Of course, that benefits uh, men, I mean, sorry, women a lot more than men, as we've seen, uh, women rely a lot on financial services. Uh, we give a lot of other other, other products such as uh, Bonga for Good, which is a road program uh, where people are donating uh, to those who, who, need it, who need it more. Uh, we have a big initiative allowed women uh, uh, in technology uh, and, and also on the supply side, we continue to make sure they shared value uh, in the types of supply that we are using. So. We make we 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 continued with the big initiatives that uh, are social in nature uh, and that drove uh, the level of diversity that we expect in our business. In terms of affordability, in terms of affordability, it's a big concern for us. Uh, and and there are two elements around uh, access to uh, connectivity services, but also mobile services. One is the network, whether the network is available, and we've done many initiatives to make sure that. Uh, have that network covered, including what we call the Universal Service Fund, which covers deep rural uh, areas, which which uh, benefit women more. The second is handsets. Uh, in terms of handset uh, penetration, we we had uh, an initiative called Maisha is Digital, which is a Swahili word for uh, life is digital, and uh, and we started to roll out uh, affordable handsets, uh, and uh, we have. Uh, uh, delivered a half a million affordable handsets in the, in the market, and we saw that 54% of those handsets were taken up uh, by women. The second is so on the pay as you go uh, support uh, on handsets, which we call Ipam Dogom Dogo, uh, which is the Swahili for pay as you go. Again, that that has uh, been very successful, uh, and we are going to continue to focus on it this year, which is you pay uh, 500 shillings, which is about five dollars as a deposit and 20 shillings, which is 20 US cents, uh, to, to acquire a 4G enabled handset. So of course that really benefits those who can't afford and uh, women are a big part of this. Uh, we have seen significant penetration. At the moment, the penetration of women is about a third. Our intention is to make sure we push it further uh, into the future. So we believe the real focus around handset uh, accessibility and affordability will make a big difference in terms of uh, build, I mean, uh, uh, reducing the gap uh, between men and women uh, on, on the connectivity side. Great. great, thanks. And great to hear about those initiatives and also that you were able to continue to drive forward such great work here despite COVID. Um, but, you know, as, as you mentioned, it sort of increased the COVID has increased the urgency to reach women with mobile. And I guess maybe as a final reflection, because I think a lot of people would like to hear. Um, based on, on your experience, what do you think is the single most impactful action that we can do to address the mobile gender gap? 
I think there are a number of elements, and, and I don't want to talk about many. I think the first is get the facts right. Uh, we, we have seen that often we do not have the facts uh, in terms of uh, penetration of handsets, penetration of connectivity services or financial services. So just getting measuring uh, allows us to make sure that we can address the gaps that we see. Uh, but I think the biggest one is paying attention to the services that are more suited uh, to, uh, to women. Uh, we know that uh, women play a big role uh, in society, especially in Africa. They are often the ones who take care of children. They are often the ones that will mark the homeworks uh, for children. So we can provide services such as uh, ensuring that uh, kids get access uh, to, to, to uh, education uh, materials uh, through uh, zero rating uh, websites that uh, provide those materials. We often see that uh, the handsets that are used usually is the mother's handset that is used by the child. Uh, so uh, uh, availing affordable handsets, uh, specifically targeted at women, will make a big difference. And then coupling that with the level of content uh, that allow women to be uh, self-sufficient. The other aspect that has been a, a very significant or very significant benefit to women is the financial services giving more independence uh, to, to women. Uh, previously, uh, we, uh, if I want to send money to my mom, I would, uh, I would give it to someone if she lives in the rural areas. And, and often that money probably will not reach the ultimate recipient. Today, with mobile financial services, uh, these women have uh, a lot more control. Uh, they can decide how to spend their money. Uh, and we can give a lot more uh, opportunities uh, for uh, women-owned businesses, uh, women-run businesses, and, and initiatives that allow women to give to have to have more control. But handsets are a big part of what we what we need to do because it will uh, it will close that gap between men and women in terms of connectivity. Thanks. Very interesting and, and very inspirational to hear about every all the work you're doing. Um, thank you so so much for your time, Peter. It's really appreciated and um, great to hear a bit more about uh, what you're doing and, and the data points that you gave. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claire. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Claire. And thank you, Peter, for sharing your perspectives and what Safaricom has been doing in Kenya. And I personally think it's truly remarkable that in a country where, 42, where women are 42% less likely than men to use mobile internet, that over half of your affordable handsets were taken up by women. And it really shows that when service providers think proactively about how they can reach women as well as men, that they, they can really, really make a, min, a difference with their mainstream services. So thank you for sharing that. I'd now like to introduce our final speaker, Doreen Bogdan-Martin, who is Director of the Telecommunication Development Bureau of ITU. We've had the pleasure of working with Doreen for a number of years now on initiatives such as Equals. Claire will be asking Doreen about her perspectives on our report and what is needed to solve the digital divide. It's great to have you here with us. Thank you so much for joining us at this launch event. Um, so we've just heard that about the latest data on the mobile gender gap. We'd just be keen to hear what is your reaction to these findings and what do you find is the most sort of interesting or important finding and, and why? Well, thank you, Claire. It's, it's great to be here. Um, I was excited to see the new report. I think there's some good news there that the gender gap in mobile internet use continues to reduce, which is great. Um, but I think we have to ask, is it at the right speed? And how long will it take before we reach gender equality in use and mobile, uh, mobile ownership? I think one of the key findings of the report is that the main barriers to use of mobile internet are this lack of literacy and digital skills, and of course affordability, particularly the cost of internet enabled handsets. And while I would say this isn't new, I think it's a really important finding uh, because unlike ever before, I think the events of the past year have shown us that connectivity it's not a nice to have, but it's a must have. And it's a must have that so many women and girls did not have during the pandemic. And so they were therefore not able to work, to learn or to access needed health information. 
And I think the long-term impact of that is really concerning. And in particular, I would say in the education space, because distance learning initiatives didn't reach the millions of, of, of kids out there, and of course, in particular, girls. And what kind of scares me is that estimates indicate that many girls, 20 million girls, they estimate may never return to school uh, following these classroom closures. So, so that's kind of scary. Um, and I think to tackle the barriers that the report has exposed, we really need to focus on, on digital skills, affordability, as I mentioned. I would also add, Claire, safety issues, security, lack of relevant online content, and also cultural factors, which are often a barrier, as you know. Uh, and this was reflected, of course, in the Equals Research Report in 2019, uh, taking stock uh, data and evidence on, on gender digital quality. So we have to keep those things in mind from our side. This is why ITU is focusing on policy and regulatory guidelines and frameworks to help countries to adopt approaches that will then make ICTs more affordable. I would also add, Claire, that we have a number of initiatives in the digital skills front, so to tap in and tackle that barrier. Uh, of course, from our equals partnership that you, you know well, our digital transformation centers, as well as our project with the Enhanced Integrated Framework, which is focused on digital skills for women in, in LDCs. Great, thanks. And I, and I love your, your opening comment about whether, is, are we going fast enough? I think that is a very important question um, to be asking ourselves because certainly I personally feel we need to go faster. Um, so as you say, we share, we share this data and, you know, new data, how important do you think it is to have this sort of data on this issue and, and, and how can it really help shape the direction of efforts in space and really help us move the needle even faster and further? Yeah, great question. I mean, I think the data and, and measurement are absolutely fundamental and, and critical. Uh, I think you can't improve what you, what you don't measure. Uh, and of course, TSMA plays, I would say, an invaluable role here in collecting data on the, the mobile gender gap. Um, and I also think data collection during COVID was really challenging. So congrats to you guys for being able to put this all, all together. Um, so for, you know, for me, data is important to understand really where we are today. Um, it's essential to paint the picture of where we are, wh where we're going, and whether that's the right direction or not. Um, this data, of course, in the ITU, it's paramount to, to our work here, uh, as we try, of course, to leverage the power of connectivity to really help transform the lives of the underserved communities, and of course, uh, including women and, and, and girls. Um, ITU, uh, as you know, also collects ICT data, uh, in different aspects of the information society, on the supply side, looking at infrastructure, access to ICTs, retail prices of ICT services, as well as the demand side info, which I think is, is growing in importance. Uh, so access and use of ICTs by households and individuals. And this really helps us to understand how women are doing and if they're catching up uh, with, with men. I think, Claire, what is critical about data collected by GSMA and others is that it really helps us understand the problems. Uh, and with that understanding, we can then develop uh, and advise on the appropriate policy interventions and, and, and responses. We can understand what works, what doesn't work, uh, and where we might need to um, reformulate and, and, and re-strategize. Um, I would say focusing on, on the great report this year, uh, it certainly shows that we need to work harder uh, together on the space of digital skills and affordability, as I mentioned before. Um, I also want to mention at the ITU, we have this digital parity, gender parity score. And so in terms of internet access on a scale where parity equals one, um, right now we're at 0.87. So we have a long way to go, um, but I think let's remember that even within that figure, I think it hides the reality for many women. Um, and of course in LDCs, only one in seven women is using the internet compared to one in four men. Um, and that's, that's really a glaring gap 
uh, one that we need to urgently close. And to do that, I think we need the right policy interventions. We need collaboration and we need partnerships. Great, thanks. I mean, I couldn't agree more. And it's, uh, it's great to us to have your data out there and to really highlight this issue. As you say, it needs to be disaggregated and we can look at, at uh, the different, um, you know, where the gaps are the biggest. So um, thanks, thanks a lot. Um, so just that you, I mean, it's been two years since you took office as the new director uh, of IQ. Um, you've touched on it a bit in some of your previous answers, but just wondering if you could tell us a bit more about um, uh, what IQ is doing to address the digital gender divide and, um, you know, and how kind of collaborative partnerships can help fast track kind of this closure of the digital gender gap. Um, so let me start with the collaborative partnership piece, which I, I think those kinds of partnerships are necessary if we want to scale impact, uh, if we want to bring the strength of each actor to um, fast track, because I think that's what we need to be doing. We need to be fast tracking, closing the gender digital divide. Um, there's a lot of great work being done out there. And I think by coming together, we can really complement each other's work and also combine efforts wherever possible so that we can reach as many women and as many girls as we can around the world as quickly as possible. And of course, I think a great example is the Equals Global Partnership that ITU uh, co-founded together with GSMA. You remember well, Matt remembers well, uh, UN Women and, and others. And it's such a great example because we have 100 collaborators, more than 100 around the world. We've delivered many concrete things from digital skills training. Now we have our new certification program. Uh, we've done lots of mentoring. We have our research projects that are focusing on uh, the digital divide and identifying potential solutions. Uh, we've got our online training, our hands-on workshops, the Tech for Girls work workshops that GSMA uh, has brought to, to the table. And also we're excited as part of Equals to be co-leading the Generation Equality uh, Technology and, um, and Innovation Action Coalition. And for that, we're looking for commitment. So any commitment makers are, are welcome to join us in, in, in that space. Of course, we have our Equals in Tech Awards, which is important. We do that every year. And it puts the spotlight on those that are actually out there making a difference to close the digital gender gap. So that's exciting. And our, our call for nominations is open for 2021. On top of that, uh, we also target girls, younger girls with our Girls in ICT Day annual celebrations. Uh, this is a big year for us because it's our 10 year anniversary. Uh, so we're doing a year long celebration with our 10 moments of Girls in ICT Day. Uh, and that's really an exciting effort um, as well. Um, other things, Claire, that we're doing, we have our Girls Can Code initiatives that we're running in, uh, in the Americas as well as Africa, uh, which is super exciting. Um, a new endeavor is in the space of cybersecurity, where women um, professionally are very underrepresented in that space. So we've started a, a global mentorship program for women in cybersecurity. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to, uh, to mention is our a network of women uh, for the ITU development sector and for our upcoming World Telecommunications Development Conference. And that network is all about increasing women's participation uh, in the conference preparatory process and the conference itself uh, and encouraging women to take up leadership positions in the ITU, um, in the ITU conference and our study groups. Uh, and so that's a really exciting um, new network that we launched. It's growing in importance, and I think it's generating lots of lots of excitement. And I guess, Claire, just to, to close on this point, I think we're we're interested um, in in joining forces with anyone that's committed to closing the digital gender gap. So uh, I think, as I said, it's only through collaboration and, and partnerships that we'll be able to make a difference. Thank you. Great. Um, thanks a lot, and it's uh, very inspirational to hear about all the things that you're doing, and it's been really also a privilege and honor for us to be part of some of those collaborations. As you say, it's so important if we're going to tackle this issue. So I just really want to thank you so much for your time today and for being such a great champion of such an important issue. Um, it's really a real privilege to have you at, at this, our launch event. So thank you so much, Doreen.
Thank you, Claire. It's been a great pleasure and really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claire and Doreen, for sharing your perspectives on this hugely important issue. And Doreen, you, you shared a number of points which resonated with me personally. Um, one of them was that you highlighted how the past year has shown us that connectivity is not a nice to have, it's a must have. But obviously, as we know, so many women are, are still missing out. And you also reminded us of the importance of gender data. You said, you can't improve what you don't measure. And in fact, gender data has been a really important theme throughout today. A number of our speakers have mentioned it. Peter, for instance, said it, uh, it was really, really important to get the facts right. And we're really proud that our mobile gender gap report that we produce annually is, is, a, is a step towards that, but there's clearly a, a need to do so much more on this. And finally, Doreen, I completely agree with your comments about the need for us to partner and combine our efforts to reach women and scale up our efforts. At the end, you said in your closing remarks, it's only through collaboration and partnerships that we'll be able to make a difference. And I think it's really, really crucial that each one of us representing our different organizations looks not only at what we can do, but also how we can work with others on this important cause particularly during today's crisis. And it's events like this that help bring potential partners together. So I want to say a massive thank you to all of you for joining today. It's been great to have you here for our launch event. And I want to say a big thank you to all of our wonderful speakers, Isabel from Zile, Mats, Claire, Vishaka, Peter and Doreen. Last but not least, I'd like to leave you with a final video where women from Africa and Asia use their mobile phones to share with us their stories of how mobile internet has supported their lives. Thank you. And I was Frida Kairuthi, from Meru County. My name is Giyaki. I was a member of Mahindi and Sogam. E, na pia nafuga, nafuga kuku, nafuga mbuzi. Hapa e, ni mashambani, bila internet, unaweza kuwa mbali sana na hii maisha ya kisasa wa sabu. Mobile ne, uh, hum, mari life ko change karke rakh diya, hamne apna syllabus bhi mobile internet se manga ke dekha aur sunna second year ka aur koi bhi topic agar humko nahi sunta tha to hum log youtube pe jaakar ke us topic ko samajhte the aur kyunki sir the nahi college band ho chuka tha un corona ke dauran to mobile hi hum logo ki bahut madad kiya mobile se humne bahut sare skills ko explore kiya jaise ki video editing karna voice editing karna video making karna humne bahut sare naye naye designs banana seekhe jaise ki apps ke madhyam se jaise canva ek app hai wo sab cheeze hum logo ne explore kiya mobile mein hi कोविड नाइन्टीन करते अत्यंत मे व्यापार वर्ट भूमि नरक विधि बलपेवा मगे व्यापार तत्र खड़े वाहन तत्ट में सिद्ध नाट मट जंग दुरकथन क्रिया कर मगे व्यापार अट लोक उदुण मुखद मट गेदर इंदगेन मम मगे व्यापार गे अतुल इंदगेन एक मट वाट्सअप इतकोट मेसेजस आगे फोन Nah, dengan adanya internet seluler serta banyaknya aplikasi yang mendukung kita untuk bisa berkomunikasi dengan keluarga kita yang jaraknya jauh, itu kita bisa melaksanakan seperti via chatting, via video call, serta masih banyak cara lainnya. Allah fukwa samba. Kuda wakati iya mewamu iliku ya. Kaba mia amta mawe tu na iya maindi tu kapi kapi sa kwa internet. खबर दबार तैर कर समय किन गुले देखे क्या सुविधा जान ठीक ठाक आईटेम मेनू टाइम तैरि करते हेल्प नहीं wakati wa corona mamangu alikuwa mgonjwa atu kapata go through the internet tukapata online doctor na tukapata kutibu na akapata nafu mika mfanyibiashara 
kwa sisi internet sijui saa hii ningekuwa wapi juu imenisaidia sana kiki zangu ziko sawa hata mapishi yangu iko sawa dunia ko team mein agar aapke paas mobile hai to puri duniya ko badal sakte hain duniya se connect kar sakte hain kwa na internet imekuwa imenisaidia sana 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 kama kama kuma tuseme wakati wa mvua inakuwa ujui tuseme mvua itanyesha lini lakini tuseme ulikuwa umeandika hata kama nimeingia kwa nje ama ni mtama na inaingia kwa 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 hizo hubs za weather unasoma unajua tuseme saa fulani itanyesha kama ulikuwa na kitu nje unaweza niweka kwa nyumba sasa imekuwa imetusaidia tu sana mimi naitwa Frida niko hapa Meru na naweza connect na ulimwengu mzima thanks to internet